to our very first Science with Jesus. We're so excited because we're starting a new Wednesday night series for Kids Club all about how God created natural scientific laws and principles and facts, but God also has power to do the supernatural. So God created the natural world and God has power over the supernatural or the impossible things. So we're going to be talking about a science experiment every single week. But we're also going to be talking about a miracle that Jesus performed or something impossible that Jesus did because Jesus is God. Our main point this week is that Jesus wants us to know him. Jesus came to earth so that every person who has a broken relationship with God can have that relationship restored. You see, we all sin. We all mess up. So we all have a broken relationship with God. But when Jesus came to earth and he died on the cross and rose again, he made a way for us to have a new and restored and repaired relationship with God, the way that we were created to be, what God planned from the very beginning. Jesus wants everybody to believe in him. When we believe in Jesus and ask him to forgive us of our sins and we spend our life following him, Jesus promises us that we'll spend forever in heaven with him and that he'll always be with us here on earth too. Jesus is with us in the natural and the supernatural moments. He's with us in the day-to-day -day life, kind of the boring, regular stuff. And Jesus also has experiences with us where we can see his power in amazing ways. Maybe you feel God's presence when we sing worship songs at church. Maybe you see a miracle happen where somebody's healed or God provides an amazing way. Or maybe you can just sense Jesus with you, speaking to you when you're reading your Bible or you're praying or you're going about your day-to-day -day life. You can see how Jesus changes you. When the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, you become more like Jesus. You become loving and honest and patient and so many more things because Jesus wants you to know him. In fact, let's change that right now. Jesus doesn't just want everybody to know him. He specifically wants you to know him. Jesus wants you to know him. He wants you to know him, Chantel. He wants me to know him, and he wants you to know him as well. Chantel, I heard you have a science experiment for us today. I do, and it has to do with the Bible story today where Ooh. Jesus healed a paralyzed man. So if you guys remember the story, how for the paralyzed man, he had some friends help him go up into the roof and bring him down to Jesus. So this science experiment is kind of going to mirror that a little bit. So what you're going to need, if you want to try this at home, make sure you have an adult, an older sibling, or someone who can supervise you. So what you're going to need is you're going to need a glass, just a drinking glass like this, and you're going to need a hex nut. If you don't know what a hex nut is, well, it has six sides because it's a hexagon. And you're also going to need something that can go in between the cup and the hex nut. And right now we're going to use the paper. So our goal for this experiment is we want to get the hex nut to go into the glass bottle using inertia. So what do you think inertia is, Pastor Sarah? Well, inertia is an object is going to continue in the state that it's in until a greater force acts upon it. So this hex nut is going to stay sitting here. It's going to continue in this state of not moving until a greater force acts upon it. It's just like if I'm walking down the street, I'm going to keep walking down the street unless a greater force stops me. So maybe I trip on the curb. Because the curb is stronger than I am, it's not going to go anywhere, it, it, you know, it's attached to the ground and I'm not, <laughs> my inertia it means that I'm going to keep moving forward even though my feet have stopped and I'm going to fall down. So inertia means you're going to continue moving or not moving unless something greater acts upon you. Right, okay. Yeah. So with that explanation, so we are going to be that greater force in this science experiment. So, like I said, we want the hex nut to fall right into the cup. And we're not going to touch the hex nut. And we're not going to touch the hex nut. You ready, Sarah? Yeah, do you want a drum roll? Okay, yeah. Can you give me a drum roll? There we go! So, the hex nut fell into 
the cup because a greater force like myself moved the paper fast enough for it to continue for the weight for it to continue to drop into the cup. It's kind of similar to the story of Jesus he healing the paralyzed man because the paralyzed man and his friends stopped at nothing to get Jesus to heal him. And Jesus was the greater power, the greater force that was able to heal the paralyzed man. So just like how we moved the paper fast enough in order to reach our goal, the, the paralyzed man and his friends, their goal was to go all the way up on top of the earth to bring the paralyzed man down to Jesus so that he could heal him. I think that is so cool. What do you think of that? I think that's the coolest. Yeah. I also think it's so cool because this hex net wasn't going anywhere. It wasn't moving. And that paralyzed man couldn't move either. And then after his encounter with Jesus, he was able to move his whole body again. But even more important than that, they were able to know that Jesus was God and that everything that he said was true. And I think it's so amazing that they were able to have a relationship with God after that. That's really cool. Yeah. story can be found in Luke chapter 5. One day Jesus was teaching and Pharisees, teachers of the law, were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him out into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles in the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, why are you thinking these things in your hearts? What is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say get up and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on, and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. Today's science experiment has to do with the laws of inertia and the laws of gravity. We made a hex net fall into a glass following these two laws. You see, inertia is when an object continues in its existing state of rest or of moving in a straight line unless that state is changed by an external greater force. So in other words, I'm gonna either stay standing still or continue moving in one direction unless something of a greater force stops me. So if I'm walking along and I walk into a wall, that wall has a greater force, it's stronger than I am, and it's gonna stop me from keep, keeping walking. You can't walk through walls. I'm not Jesus. Gravity, on the other hand, is the force that attracts all objects towards the center of the earth. It's the force that pulls us down so we stay on the ground. And in this case, gravity was a stronger force than inertia. So when we pulled the card out between the hex nut and the glass, the hex nut no longer stayed in that place where it had been. It fell right into the glass. Today's Bible story is found in the book of Luke in Luke chapter 5. And we know that Luke was actually a doctor and he understood the importance of natural laws and understanding science and looking after your body and all of these things that happen in the natural world. But he also was able to experience the supernatural power of God when he followed Jesus. Now, he didn't follow Jesus when Jesus was alive on earth. He heard about all of these stories and came to believe in Jesus after Jesus had died and rose from the dead. Luke actually went around and interviewed all of these different Christians who had been walking with Jesus when Jesus lived on the earth, and he wrote the book of Luke. It was almost like a scientific or a historical document that took all of these eyewitness reports and recorded them in one place. 
So Luke understands the importance of the natural world and how things happen naturally, and he understands that the supernatural world and that Jesus' power is greater. Jesus was teaching people all about who God was and how we can follow God and be friends with him. He had the power of God to heal the sick because Jesus is God. And he knew what people were thinking. We hear in this story that Jesus knew exactly what the thoughts were of the religious leaders in that room. And we know that he was able to heal the paralyzed man. But the greatest power that Jesus demonstrates in this story is that Jesus is able to forgive this paralyzed man's sins. And Jesus refers to himself with a special name in this story, the name Son of Man. And this name reminds us that Jesus is 100% a man because it says Son of Man and that he was a human who was born on earth and lived his life on earth and died on earth. But we also know that this title, Son of Man, reminds us that Jesus is 100% God. The title Son of Man was used in the Old Testament hundreds of years before Jesus was born to describe the Messiah or Rescuer. And we know that Jesus is the Messiah, that Jesus is God come to earth to rescue us from our sins. So when Jesus said to the paralyzed man, I have the power to forgive you of your sins, he was reminding them that he was 100% human. He knows what it's like to live in this world day to day following these natural laws. And he understands what life is like here on earth. But Jesus is also 100% God and his power is greater than anything that we can face. We know the most important thing to Jesus is that we know him and that we have a relationship with God that we ask Jesus to forgive our sins, and that we spend our life believing in him and following him. We can be friends with God, and we know that that is true because earlier in the same chapter, in Luke chapter five, Jesus does one of the most important things in the entire gospel of Luke. He calls his disciples, Peter, James, John, and Andrew, to follow him. They were fishermen, and they would spend all of their time catching fish, and like luring them in, trying to get them to come into their nets. Jesus said, you spend all of your time trying to get these fish to come to you. Well, I'm gonna make you fishers of men. I want you to tell other people about me and bring them to God. The same way you're trying to bring fish to you, I want you to bring people to God so that they can know him. We know that it's so important to God that we know him, that we have a relationship with him, and that we can be friends with him. Because earlier in this chapter, Jesus calls his disciples to first be fishers of men, or fishers of people. And then we also know in this story, the most important thing to Jesus was that this man who was paralyzed have a relationship with God. You see, sometimes on earth, God does amazing things. He performs miracles and he heals people. But sometimes on earth, people still get sick. People still suffer and get hurt. And sometimes people still die. In fact, everyone here on earth dies. But Jesus promises that when our life on this earth is over, we get to spend forever in heaven with him. And in heaven, there's no pain, there's no suffering, there's no sickness, there's no sin, there's no death. Our relationship with God starts here on earth and we can see amazing things happen now. But Ultimately, the best thing that can happen to us is spending forever in heaven with Jesus. I'm so excited to go to heaven one day, boys and girls, and I'm excited to see you there too.